Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Hey Sister. We have a doozy for you. Hey, sister, how you doing? Come on, girl. I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself, sister? Honey, listen. The reason we have having this show tonight is because folks is losing their mind. It's like, what is going on? I really feel like, what is really going on? Am I caught up in the matrix? Am I living in the matrix? I just, I'm waiting for Neo to pop out. Like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for something to be uncovered here. Because that's how I feel most days. Like, I'm caught up in the matrix. So, that's why we got on tonight to talk about Politics, pop culture, and people who is trying it. <laughs> well, I think we should look. I want to definitely uh, shout out our, our our ladies that are um, joining us here on the Be Live platform. You know, we have some of our regulars that are joining us. So, Miss Jody Chantel, shout them out. And um, yeah, let's just jump right in it because. Woo child. Hey, Rosalind, we see you, girl. Hey, I hey, see you. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Where shall we begin? So let's, let's, okay. We're going to start over in the world of politics. And I'm going to try this thing again where I share my screen. It may not work, but I will put the link down here in the comments for you guys to go take a look and see. So earlier this week, um, and see, this is what I mean by feeling like you caught up in the matrix. I can't even remember if it was this week, like the last five count cal seven calendar days, because things have just been so crazy and coming at us like a hundred miles a minute as it pertains to the news. But Professor Eddie Glaude Jr., who is a commentator, he's a professor at Princeton of African-American studies, but he's also a regular on the Morning Joe show as well as the other MSNBC shows. And he was on, and I'm assuming it was earlier this week, like I said, I've lost track of the days. And he was talking about how blaming Donald Trump is really too easy. And this is us. So let's see if we're able to sh if we're able to play this while we're on. Okay, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Well, there's the link. Y'all can see the picture. Let me try this again. Uh, if we can't, we're not going to give a lot of time to it, but we will definitely put it out in the links. I mean, well, the, I'm um, in the link, but let's play some of it because at the very least, hopefully, you guys can hear it. So you guys, America, tell us if you can hear this as a country. We're not unique in our evils, to be honest with you. Um, I think where, we're, where we may be singular is our a refusal to acknowledge them mm -hmm. and the legends and myths we tell about our inherent, you know, goodness uh, to hide and cover and conceal so that we can maintain a kind of willful ignorance that protects our innocence. See, the thing is that when the Tea Party was happening, we used people were, we were saying pundits, oh, it's just about economic populism. <laughs> It's not about race. When people knew, people knew, social scientists were already writing that what was driving the Tea Party were anxieties about Economic demographic anxiety. shifts, that the country was changing, that they were seeing these racially ambiguous babies on, on Cheerios commercials, that the country wasn't quite feeling like it was a white nation anymore. And people were screaming from the top of their lungs. Yo, this is not just simply economic populism. This is the un ugly underbelly of the country. See, the thing is, is this, and I'll say this, and I'll take the hit on it. There are communities that have had to bear the brunt of America confronting, white Americans confronting the danger of their innocence. And it happens every generation. So somehow we have to kind of, oh my God, is this who we are? And just again, another here's another generation of babies. Think about it. The two-year-old had his bro bones broken by two parents sh trying to shield him from being killed. A woman who has been married to this man for as long as I've been on the planet almost lost her, lost her husband. For what? And so what we know is that the country has been playing politics for a long time on this hatred. We know this. 
So it's easy for us to place it all on Donald Trump's shoulders. It's easy for us to place Pittsburgh on his shoulders. It's easy for me to place Charlottesville on his shoulders. It's easy for us to place El Paso on his shoulders. This is us. And if we're going to get past this, we can't blame it on him. He's a manifestation of the ugliness that's in us. I've had the privilege of growing up in a tradition that didn't believe in the myths and the legends because we had to bear the brunt of them. Either we're going to change, Nicole, or we're going to do this again and again, and babies are going to have to grow up without mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts, friends, while we're trying to convince white folk to finally leave behind a history that will maybe, maybe, or embrace a history that might set them free from being white. Woo! That's all I can say, that some of us have had to bear the brunt of the myths and the legends that we tell ourselves. But this is us. This is who we are as a country and until. Mm, I don't know what you say, sister. That, that just, that, that still really moves me every time I listen to it. Well, first, I will. I hope everybody was able to hear it. So, you know, let us know in the comments if you all were able to hear it. If not, again, we have it in the links. Uh, I mean, we'll put it the link in the comments. Um, yeah, I, you know, when I heard it immediately, I, I, you know, I reposted it myself, and I think we both ended up reposting it and and hadn't had the conversation yet. But then you and I had a subsequent conversation. I, I think first, first things first, you know, shout out to Moss Point, Mississippi, um, because we have roots there as well. And so um, Professor Glaude, uh, I think, did his home, his city, hometown, his state, and, uh, and all of us very proud by being honest and just kind of spelling it out. Uh, the second second aspect that I would say is, you know, you and I had a further discussion and we created this platform of Hey Sister because we wanted to share with people the type of conversations we have um, on a regular basis. And because of that, part of the conversation that you and I had was that, you know, Professor Glock received some backlash actually from folks who were saying, you know, oh, the, you know, it's white people. It's not us. And it is us. And he was right. This is us. This is who we are. We live in a country that was founded on the premise of racism. Uh, you know, many of us in the black community suffer from the country cousin, which is colorism. And oh, yeah. we do. And 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 we we have to be honest about how we feel about, how other people feel about us, but how we feel about ourselves. And so, um, yeah, this brother, he, he spoke a word. That's all I can say. And anybody who has any disagreements with it, you know, I would, I would question why. What part of that did you fail to understand um, about this being us? This is what this nation was founded on. And it doesn't mean that we haven't seen a glimpse of hope. We do. We often do. You know, I sit and have these conversations with our dad because, quite frankly, many times I feel lost. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to ha how to deal with these feelings. Um, because sometimes it, it just feels like it, it's not getting better. We're in the year of our Lord, 2019. I mean, Prince sang about 1999. Damn, that's 20 years ago already. <laughs> and the book 1984, you know, Ben came. Like, what are we doing and how are we still repeating the same mistakes? But if we don't, if we don't acknowledge the history, if we don't acknowledge our past and we're not honest about it, we're just going to keep making the same mistakes and our children and grandchildren will be saying in, in 10, 20, 30 years, the same thing. 
Yeah, well, you know, it reminds me of the quote from Coretta Scott King that said, the fight for civil rights is a fight for every, every generation. And I think one of the challenges is, is that people got comfortable. It just, they felt like so much progress was made in a short period of time because when we really start peeling back the layer, it's really within our lifetime. We are the first generation and neither one of us are 50 years of age. We are the first generation to be born with our full rights and freedoms as people of color, black people, uh, American descendants of slaves, whatever acronym you want to use to describe yourself because people got so many acronyms these days. We're the first generation to be born with full rights and freedoms under the laws of this country. And so that goes, what, 1964 civil rights legislation. And I think people just got real comfortable and real lax and did not continue to push and fight and push and fight and push and fight. Therefore, the reaction we have for some people is like they've really lost their mind because they don't know how to handle equity. They don't know how to handle uh, fairness because they've been taught and told all their life that that they were better just because of their existence. And so then when you have people of color and then when you have women and then when you have gay people and everybody else is like, no, no, we got that too. And we can do it better than you. Their mind is blown. They, they have lost their mind. And I think that's why the fight is a fight for every generation because people, we just got too comfortable and we thought that we fooled ourselves. So like Eddie Glaw said, the myths and the lies that we tell ourselves about the progress that was made really wasn't the progress at all. So I think that time though you can celebrate your successes but not take your eyes off the prize. And I just think a lot of people took their eyes off the prize and that's we are living the manifestation of eyes being off the prize and people laxing up. And well, that's, that's, interesting interesting to me. that's interesting to me because I'm always like, why would we ever take our eyes off the prize when the, it's, there has never been equity? So even well, when- people felt, they felt that they achieved what they wanted to achieve. Well, I, I guess, you know, one of the moments that I had this week and uh, and this again can, can roll into our next conversation on politics. But one of the moments that I had this week, you know, after the shootings, after Professor Glaude's comments, um, listening to 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 some activists on the, the Breakfast Club, uh, Tamika Mallory and others speak about what happened at the Democratic rally. Um, I, I just really. I was angered at the fact that we, and now I'm talking about black people, whatever, again, whatever title you call yourself, people who usually check the black or African-American box in <laughs> on the census. I don't know whatever you want to call yourself, but I was so angry because I was like, you know, so often we'll say stuff like, oh, I couldn't have lived through slavery. Oh, yeah. I could have done Jim Crow. That ain't me. They would have had to catch these hands. I, and we speak about the past and our ancestors as if they were not strong people or they did not fight back, that we ha somehow would have been different. And yet I sit and I listen and I watch the degradation of rights happening in a different way, but still happening. So now we don't have segregation on the books, but we have gentrification and we have segregated schools and we have a tax base that allows certain people to live in certain areas. And we have redlining and we have all these other things that equal to segregation. You just call it by a different name. And yet we talk about what we wouldn't have put up with and what we wouldn't have handled and what we wouldn't have done. And yet I'm sitting up here like we are doing it. We're sitting here being passive. We're being the very people that we claim we would never have been. And I'm just wondering at what point are we, myself included, when are we gonna wake up and do something different? 
Mm. Well, I like the way you said that because they are. I hear a bunch of folks. I wouldn't have. They wouldn't have. They, I wouldn't have been no slave. They wouldn't have been able to do that to me. But then they don't vote. Girl, go sit down somewhere. Let's <laughs> let's move on to the next topic. Hi, yeah. please. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, politics. Okay, I don't. Joe Biden. Jesus be offense. First of all. <laughs> I'm still tired that there's 22 Democratic candidates, but I know that this is part of the process. It's going to whittle itself down at some point, but I'm tired of all 22. <laughs> Joe, 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 Joe. Now, Joe got himself in trouble this past week. Some of y'all have seen it. If you didn't see it, you, you'll find it. And where he made a, a, a comment and it went something to the fact that, uh, you know, poor children are just as smart as white kids. And then he kept going on, you know, and in, in, in black and in, in Hispanic and Asian and whatever. He went on with it, whatever. And so people been quibbling and uh, quibbling and like, well, what are we going to do with uncle? What are we going to do with Joe Biden? What he keeps, he's a gaff machine and he's this, he's that. Let me tell y'all something. And I ain't even, I don't even ride hard for Joe like that. I don't care if a uh, broom is the Democratic nominee against Donald Trump. I'm voting for the broom. It, it ain't even because I'm a ride hard Democrat like that. I've told y'all I'm a registered independent. But if, if, if Sporky from Toy Story 4 is the candidate against Donald Trump, I'm voting for Sporky. How about that? Some of us need to get off our high horse. And as we say, eyes on the prize. Look at what you're up against. Come on, man. Stop it. And the other thing that's intellectually dishonest is folks know what he meant. Because when I say a billionaire, a wealthy billionaire in this country, what visual came to your mind? Y'all type down in the comments, who is the image of so who came into your mind? Who came into your mind? And if it wasn't Oprah, then you suffer for unconscious bias. Let's go. Well, listen, I actually didn't hear what little Joey said. <laughs> and, <laughs> and quite frankly, you know, I, what I will say is, while I am we'll say if Sporky is the candidate, because Sporky got good as chance than some of these other folks out there. Well, what I would say before that is listen, <laughs> there are 12,000 candidates running on the Democratic side. But you know what? Even as annoying as it is to me slightly, I have to remind myself there were 12,000 candidates running on the Republican side the last time. And y'all and they led somebody from the JV team who wasn't even making the cut come up and become their candidate. So I, I would just say, don't, don't let anybody make y'all feel some kind of way about this process. I'd rather us dwindle it down, hopefully to somebody that we can all rally behind, even if it's Forky, versus what we have now. And let me just I don't care if we can rally or not. We ain't got a rally. We got a choice to make. And we don't have the luxury, which we didn't have in 2016. But people confuse themselves. See, they got comfortable. They confuse themselves and said they had the luxury of having they con of they to vote their conscience. Baby, we ain't got the luxury of voting our conscience when uh number 45 is the candidate on the other side. That's all I'm saying. I feel that. We got a comment here. Little League is more appropriate. He was always picked last. Absolutely. Picked last. You know, but he pulled himself up by his uh, million dollar bootstraps. <sighs> Speaking <laughs> of bootstraps. So the, see the NCAA. The NCAA decides they want to implement this rule only for basketball girl tell them about the rule because i'm tired you used to work at other station <laughs> you know 
what? I'd be lying if I had all the details. All I know is it's called Rich Paul Rule. They saying that the folks, uh, the agents have to have a college degree in order for them to uh, be an agent. And obviously it's, it only relates to basketball. So clearly it, it's racist at it, it, its very, you know, core. And here, okay, so here's my overall problem. Number one. I would like to say that, you know, in my, my my dad and I had this discussion as well. And, you know, he has some he has some feelings about what Rich Paul advised uh, Anthony Davis to do. And he's not he didn't feel that. But, you know, his whole point is, well, what are these NBA players going to do and how are they going to use their influence to pretty much pushback on the NCAA. Now, I know a lot of people tweeted and they had some comments, but again, it goes back to this, what are we actually going to do about it? Like, what are you going to do to make change? First of all, the NCAA is supposed to be over collegiate. It's the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Therefore, they should have absolutely no bearings on what somebody does once they declare that they're going pro or who they choose to have as their agent. Period. Point blank. That's number one. If they want their grandma to be their agent and she has absolutely no knowledge of basketball, that is their, that should be their option. Prerogative. Is their prerogative. Right. Absolutely. Um, number two, if you're, yeah, you're over athletics in a, on a collegiate level, which I already have questions. What is the point of the NCAA anyway? Because to me, it's, it, again, is modern day slavery for all of the folks who say, well, it couldn't have been me. It is you. It is you if you're playing sports and you're making millions of dollars for institutions and you can't make a dime for yourself. They can put your name on a shirt and sell it and you can't even get profit off of your own last name. Into so, perpetuity. And if you don't know what perpetuity <laughs> means, that means forever. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I already take a lot of issue with the NCAA. Not really sure um, what, what I, I really don't know what purpose they're serving anymore because, I, you know, uh, I, I see them coming down very hard on some certain institutions and not others. Uh, yeah, I don't know their purpose, but all I know is it feels very much like modern day slavery. And this decision just goes to show again, in, in my opinion, that when you are a black man, wealthy, powerful, able to make, um, they make he he's obviously making some people's knees buckle, and for them to create an entire rule to try to suppress the likes of men like himself, um, I I I, I just want to see what what these ball players gonna do about it because the I know it's hard for the ones that are in college now because they're on scholarship, many of them are on scholarship. But collectively, they should be saying, "Now nah, we're going to sit this season out. And the scholarship is a year-to-year -year contract that the school has with that athlete. It's not like they automatically get that scholarship for all those years that they um, potentially are in school. That's A. B, if the NCAA is the governing body for all the athletics and the institution, then why does that rule only apply to one sport? Right. And then major league and then those who are in baseball could do whatever they want when they want, how they want. They need to go sit down somewhere that we got some comments over here in the um on the watch party over here. This one is a little latest for our previous topic said Joe only gets in the way of Joe. His mouth will be his biggest competitor. Well, you said that, Mr. D'Angelo. He also said, D'Angelo also says exactly the NCAA acts as a slave owner. It's all corrupt. So, yes, we have, again, back to Eddie Gloss, the myths and the lies and the legends that we tell ourselves about amateur athletics when you have coaches and that it's about student athletes, but you have coaches who make more money than the university president by 100 times in some cases. Um, you have 
big dollars, billion dollar television contracts. And then you have student athletes who, if a coach bought them a hamburger, could get suspended. Yeah. Come on, man. Stop with the lies. Stop with the lies. Another, another, and this comment reinforcing that. Right. You can't even have chain up have pocket change to go get a burger. Exactly. Right. And if any coach buys you a burger or even attempts and knowing that you're hungry or you don't have food to eat, they can't even help you. That's right. ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, for it to be specific to basketball, we know that basketball is a predominantly black male sport and that Rich Paul, the agent, is a young black man, then it speaks volumes. And if the NCAA, I mean, when folks who are not black can call it racism on television, I don't know what these players sitting around doing. We can, we, uh, pardon my language, but we can bitch and complain. But are y'all gonna do something? If y'all not gonna do something, we, we don't even need to talk about it. Yeah, what y'all really gonna do? Because I uh, listen, I already, I already ain't you. You know, I've already stopped with the NFL. I could stop with all of it. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and the NBA is so boring these days. I really don't watch it till we get to the playoffs anyway. <laughs> You know, because the, the basketball really is just not that compelling anymore. So, you know, what else? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say that. We got another comment over here in the watch party from Lakeisha. It says, which is sad since those students are the ones bringing in the money and the viewers. Absolutely. They bring in the money. They bring in the viewers. They pay salaries. And they can't, they can't get a pair of shoes. And listen, when the season, everything is, is, is nice, it's cool, it's gravy, but those kids got to go home when the season's over and when school is out. Right. And I will say this. I appreciate Chris Broussard getting on his his social media and promoting HBCUs and telling me, John, athletes go to HBCUs. Please do. We, you know, Xavier University, Southern University, we welcome you with open arms. I will say, however, that is still uh, a component of the NCAA. And so the question became, comes, number one, why is it, why does the NCAA have the level of power that they have? Like, what? how do you have the unmitigated gall to think that you can make a rule about somebody's professional life if you're over collegiate sports and you're supposed to be over amateur play? It, but again, this goes to the country that we live in right now where unmitigated gold is just floating from the skies or something. It's just everywhere. Just everywhere. Unmitigated gold. We are swimming in it. Like you got to get those strokes up to deal right. with that unmitigated gold. <laughs> Okay, yes, no. indeed. <laughs> so let's talk about some unmitigated gold, girl. Now, some of y'all going to have to go online and look it up. I have to post it in the comments, the link in the comments. There is this article. I think it's either the Atlantic.com or the cut.com. I think it was the cut. I think it's the cut. So there's a photo. So in Eddie Glaude's comments earlier, you heard him talk about a, a young child who was shielded by its parents from being shot in El Paso. That young parent, child's parents died in El Paso. That young child was released from the hospital and then brought back to the hospital for a photo op with the current White House resident and his wife. And it got me to thinking, first of all, you got to read the article. So I have to go find the link so you can read it. But it really got me to thinking about this photo with that thumbs up, that cheesy thumbs up, the baby like this. Because <laughs> he's like, who are these people that's holding me? The sterile fake phoniness of it and to use that child as a prop. You talk about unmitigated gall. It's sickening. And then it got me to thinking, 
what's going to happen when that child does come of age, has some agency over itself and starts to ask questions about my parents starts to wonder about the origin of that photo because that photo will be there forever. Mm -hmm. What are the lies and myths people gonna tell that child about that incident that the, the, his parents died, but he's in this photo with a grinning narcissistic. It's so sickening to use that baby as a prop I, my mind was just like, my, just ache as a parent. Just absolutely heartache. I don't know. What did you think when you saw it and read it? I told you, I thought Serena Joy and Commander Waterford stealing baby Nicole, somebody else's baby, to hold up and act as though that, like, like the person who murdered this child's parent espouse to the same anti-immigrant beliefs that you have and you have the audacity to go and hold this baby. The fact that nobody else wanted to meet with your raggedy ass and you got the audacity to hold this baby. This baby is two months old. Protected from being murdered by his mother. His father dies a few days later. And all y'all doing is sitting there smiling for a photo out. Like, you don't even understand the solemnity of the situation. You can't make speeches and show any form of empathy. That is disgusting to me. It is disgusting. And I gen genuinely do not know. Um, I genuinely don't know what it takes. For you to, I don't know. I don't know what you have to tell yourself in your mind about who you are to do this. I don't know, but I, I want to. I want to chop them both in the throat just real quick. Hit them right there in the Adam's apple because it is. Ugh. And then you know the fact of the matter is, I'm like, there was another baby who lost his mother as well in Dayton, Ohio. It's also two months old. Y'all wouldn't go and take pictures with the black baby. So this whole little scenario that y'all putting up here, this, 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 I, I don't even understand how you fix in your mind. You don't want his parents in this country, but you gonna hold this baby. I, it's just, I'm out, I'm out done. And then on the same day, you had a huge ice raid in Jackson and around Jackson, Mississippi, targeting the workers. We gonna talk about that, but targeting Hispanic workers and those children went and home I their children from the first day of school and go home and some of them, their parents not there. And even in that, in Jackson, there a, was a one year old who the father left in custody of the church. So he could go find where they have transported his wife. Now I was like, the baby is one, she could still be nursing right now. But this is what I don't understand. And this is where, Again, when you, you, you speak about the fight for civil rights every 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 generation, but I, I always go back to the silence of our friends is what we remember. I do not see how anybody who, especially these quote unquote parents out here, how y'all can see folks getting their children, your child come home, comes home from school and they no longer have, a, their, their parents are just gone. I, I mean, just think about that. They don't know where they've been sent to. They have no way of really finding out. The young lady who was 14 years old who was interviewed said, you know, the people got all kind of attitudes with her when she's on the phone trying to figure out where her uh, her dad was. Now, her father actually came back home, but he has a, 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 a ankle monitor on. But I'm like, how, again, what do you twist? How do you twist your mind? How do you contort your thoughts 
to see these kind of things and think any of that is okay. Because like you said about the raid in Mississippi, y'all didn't close down the plant. You didn't find the owners. Oh no, they say it's an ongoing investigation. Wait a minute, but y'all already, they've already been fined. One of those plants have already been fined for abusing domestic uh, or their undocumented workers by not paying them fairly. Because um, some of, somebody had the courage to say they're not being paid. Someone also had the courage to file a lawsuit against them because of being harassed, sexually harassed. And 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 you gonna like round up the workers? Where the CEO? Right. Why y'all didn't round him up? And then and what? what and then then you, like there's uh that was like. I can't remember how many workers in, in that raid, but then you're like, you know, we have 49 other states. But so if it's that many people in Mississippi that you're rounding up, so when we gonna just be doing these random raids of people all over this country? And then the, ba the baffling part, like you said, and then when we suffer the consequences of what that looks like, mm -hmm. what that means, who, don't be mad. Because like they said, they posted for those jobs. Where y'all at? Sign up. Go work in the chicken factory. Let me see how many of y'all going to apply for the job in the chicken factory. Because you're not. But you don't want these people to make an honest living. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do. I, 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 I can't do all I, I can I say comments I want to put up here on the screen here. One we got from Rosalind said, how's it going to be ongoing when you had evidence that thing uh, that things are not right? Well, not only did they not have, they had evidence, they've already been fined before. And they say it wasn't random. So then that begs the question. So if it wasn't random, then, then, then why would they target it? And there's some thoughts out there about that. We got a, a comment over here from Cher in the uh, watch party. It says, he is the epitome of a real bastard. He has absolutely no agenda except self and those that line his pockets. But then I don't understand how they gonna keep lining them pockets. I, I, I don't understand because like, here's the thing, as we said, so let, let's kind of carry this out. Cause I kind of had this, you know, got into this uh, very brief because they ain't respond after I dropped a few, you know, words on them uh, on a comments thread on WWL TV. I'm like, OK, so when the price of your food go up, I won't hear nothing. Right. I do not want to hear it. First of all, we got tariffs with China and China like we ain't buying no more of your food. So you mean. The country that has more people in the world than anybody. <laughs> we can't even sell our goods to. The farmers, the increase of farmers filing bankruptcy is on the rise. And then those who are using, and basically it's slave labor because you know they're using those undocumented people because see, this is what they did. This is what they did. They gave those people fake social security numbers because they've already been fined for doing it before, some of those plants. Giving those people falsified documentation. So that's how they got them here to work so then they could treat them how they want to. And, and again, I'm waiting for all them folks in, in Mississippi and West Virginia, I'm waiting for y'all to go work at the poultry plant and cut them, cut them chickens up. So... Yeah, because as delicious as chicken chicken is, I have absolutely no desire to work in said sort of processing plants. Let's be very clear about that. I remember when you were in high school and you went on your little field trip to the chicken plant. When you came home and described it, I was good. I was good then. I knew very fully, fully well that mm, I never want to do that job. So I, I just want to say, though, that number one, um, I think it was Doris Hearns. She was on MSNBC as well, um, his, historian, who was speaking on the fact that, you know, when we talk about this immigration issue, um, we speak about it today in, in terms of, uh, of, of the Hispanic population or Latinx population. But 
there was um, there was a time when those saying undesirables were the Irish, and there was a time when those undesirables were the Italians. And so, you know, I am I struggle with the fact that we have this desire to always one up somebody that we never want to be at the bottom of the totem pole. We always want to oppress somebody else. And it drives me nuts because I just want to, I, I want the day when we stop trying to be oppressors and we actually learn to re realize that we are better together. We are very, we're better together because that immigrant labor, if, if at any point it all just went away, this country's economy is going to collapse. And I don't understand what people don't understand about that. That's just what it is. Run the numbers, do your own research. If the if tomorrow every immigrant said, I'm done, deuces, and they stop, this country's economy is going to collapse. And when I hear people, especially Black people, talk about getting in line and doing the process the right way. Let me say this in no uncertain terms. When your ancestors were stolen and brought here without a piece of documentation, without a process, you have, you, you have no right to tell people about getting in line and doing it the right way. When the forefathers came over here and stole this country from the native people, the indigenous people, they didn't jump in nobody's line. They didn't file any papers. They did not put a process in place. They just did it. And when we live in California, uh, Arizona, Texas, and shock and awe, New Mexico, those were Mexico. So how do how we look trying to tell people Texas? Who's Hey, ha, the name is Mexican, y'all. <laughs> How we look telling people who this country, this, that used to belong, that was, the, that's their, this is their indigenous land. How we look trying to tell them about a process. Now, look, I'm all for following the rules and what have you. But when the rules start to get twisted and bent and only certain people have to follow them, I have a problem with it. And what a lot of Americans don't seem to know is that process is not an easy one. Obviously, we have an aunt who's from a, a, from, from Bermuda. Uh, she she was married to her uncle forever. And it, it, she did not get become a citizen but a few years ago. And you were we saying about, about Martin Anderson. Yes. Martin Anderson started playing in the NFL. He played for the Saints back in what seven started in '79. Martin just got his citizenship. His right. people, Denmark. He just got his citizenship. And see, that's the other thing. Because see, whenever you say immigrant, there's an image that come up in people's mind, just like when I said billionaire earlier. Right. So that's what we got to check our unconscious bias. Because see, they they're not talking about the Martin Andersons of the world. No, I mean he and he says very specifically who he wants to come here. So that's that's why I'm like stop stop with the foolery. I work with a lot of people who are are on green cards and or work visas and they tell me about the process and this that whole idea of don't cut the line there is no cut, there is no line to cut. There is no line in the first place. Yes, it's a long arduous process. And some certain countries are, are seen as, as not preferential. So it takes longer if you come from certain countries. So it's like, please stop. Please stop. Look, if the immigrant population chunked up the deuces, this economy is going to fail. Just know that. Yeah. Well, we got some comments here. One says 45 wife just got hers. Mm -hmm. Girl, and her parents. She just got her parents got theirs just once he took office. How that happened? Right. What line did they jump? Now that's that talk. You want to talk about skipping? How many people did they get in front of? Hmm. Speak on it. Right. But the process is long and expensive. It's long, it's expensive. And and then hey, and that's why so many people are here because I, we what we don't know is how many people who are at those plants in, in Mississippi who were on a work visa that expired. 
And it's been taking forever because they have not been processing this paperwork. It's taken forever to get um, renewed. You know, right. we don't know all the circumstances. Especially if you just said, if you just said all of Hispanics go to the left and everybody else go to the right, you didn't even take no time to figure out who was actually, you know, a legal, had legal documentation. You just put them all in one room and was like, we'll sift through that later. Yeah. Then we got another one. Why the all lives matter people ain't mad at the companies. Right. Because uh, because all lives don't matter. So we got another uh, comment over here says uh, on the watch party says he's keeping China and Russia great. When he leaves office, the economy, will, the economy will be much worse than the depression Bush created. Um, and there are already signs of that right now. Uh, we got another comment here it says checking off completed campaign promises. I guess so, but yeah, there there's already evidence out there that the economy is not as great because of course, when you say economy, what measures are you using to define the economy? But when uh, farmer, farming bankruptcies are already on the rise as well as the underemployment. So yes, people are working, but when everybody's working for Uber and Lyft and now Uber about, they about to raise, Uber and Lyft about to raise their rates because they ain't making no money. Guess what? <laughs> the economy not as strong as we think. And we learned that during the government shutdown because people who work for the government could not miss one paycheck. So it's already not that great. I mean, the stock market's doing great. Thank God for those of us who are participating in the stock markets, have 401ks or old 401ks that rolled over in the IRAs. But for everybody else, I'm going to just leave that alone. Yeah, girl, we only got 14 minutes left and we haven't even gotten to the other two pieces. And we still, <laughs> and we still haven't talked about your boy, the number one hot topic of the night. Which is the number one hot topic of the night, girl? Yeah, Jeffrey, you went to the upper room or the lower room, depending on where the pedophiles go. I don't know which room they go to. Listen, listen. The upper room. <laughs> yeah, listen. Okay. Now, if you guys watch Orange is the New Black, I watch Orange is the New Black. If you haven't watched this last season, I'm going to try not to do no spoilers. Mm -hmm. But if you watch this last season, a lot of it, it ties into this whole, the thing about immigration, about the for-profit prison, as well as the, these for-profit detention centers. So the bottom line, we're going to say on all of that as it relates to these politics, as it relates to these food plants, and then uh, with these people, follow the money, follow honey. The follow the money. And that tells us everything that we need to know. And we need to talk about this money, those FEC data. Sister, will you please put that in the comments somewhere so people can know? Because see, we can't. I brought Denise is on here. Denise went and had to do some investigating. Of Denise, the you can't shop at houses no more, girl. <laughs> girl. And we already knew about Chick-fil-A because Chick-fil-A don't like gay people. And I respect their religious beliefs and what have you. But y'all ain't no Christians because Jesus said, let, some, he, he, let him do the judging. You just love your fellow man. How about that? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> anyway, I don't like Chick-fil-A that much. But yes, yeah, so before we get to Jeffrey Epstein, which is his horrid self, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, Joaquin Castro, the brother of Julian Castro, and Joaquin is a congressman, he posted the list of some of them folks who uh, donated to this 2020 campaign. And that's why uh, Ross, whatever his name is, who owned the Miami Dolphins, who's a large investor in Equinox Gems and Soul Cycle. Yeah. So that's how he got, they got called out. But so we took it upon ourselves to start going type in. And so my friend Denise here, she had looked up and she saw, oh, and we from Louisiana. And we grew up shopping at Rouse's. We was at Rouse's before people in New Orleans knew what Rouse is. Now Rouse's is all over New Orleans. Child, we can't shop at Rouse's no more because they is donating to this campaign. And then we need to go see who their workforce is stocking them shelves at night. We ain't going to go there with y'all, Rouse. But okay. But then we start digging some more. 
You can search by the zip code where you live, name, the company that you work for. Just tell y'all, go out there and look at that because that's one thing we do have control over where we spend our dollars. Right. I and sister, I don't know how to put it, but I have it. I'll put it in afterwards. And so y'all have fun. Go go look at up, look up your friends and family members and stuff. You it will be enlightening. So back to orange is the new black. And I'm going to tie this into Jeffrey Epstein. So there's a scene in Orange and the New Black this season where one of the um, inmates tries to commit suicide. Yes. And she has a hard time because she was looking for, okay, what I'm going to use? What am I going to use? Because I can't use these sheets. I can't use this. You know, so she tries to make shift something and, and tries. But the bed is short. And she can't. There's nothing to tie up to the roof, to the ceiling. So she don't have that much of a bandwidth. And she struggles because she tried to jump off. And she's like, okay, this ain't really working right. You know, I want to know if somebody was in a protective cell. Hmm. I ain't shared no tears for Jeffrey Epstein, but I do want justice to be served for the women whose lives he impacted. And hopefully that justice will still be able to be served. Hopefully the estate will still have enough solvency so that they can receive some type of uh, financial recompense. But what I do know is that all them unsealed documents Calling out names, Bill Richardson, Alan Dershowitz, and all of y'all who say, we ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing. Yeah, uh-huh. The ones who be crying, they ain't do much, do nothing. The loudest is the ones who usually guilty. But I'm going to leave that right there. Well, I'm just going to say that, um, yes, uh, I, I don't care that Jeffrey Epstein is going to the upper, lower, middle, room, wherever he's at. Um good riddance, but I will say that um, I do want to know the truth about what happened. The documents are unsealed. I want those women um, to be, um, to get some level of justice. Um, the unfortunate piece is because he died in federal custody, William Barr in his, his, his department is going to be responsible for investigating. And obviously I don't necessarily trust William Barr. Um, at the same time, uh, Donald Trump is already uh, throwing out his conspiracy theories, and I, I, I'm not. I'm I'm baffled. How are you trying to blame the Clintons for having Jeffrey Epstein killed? But you like in videos with the dude hitting women on the butt, grabbing them, and and, and all these things. I'm just like, if anybody would have him killed. I mean, yeah, I know the Clinton name, Clinton's name came up, but you were hanging with the dude like tough. You know, the Clinton said, hey, yeah, they rode on his plane or Bill said he flew on his plane. Listen, I don't know, but I'm like, let's find it all out. Let's take them all down. Because at some point, folks got to realize that, yeah, this, this is... Just the stuff that I've heard this dude wanting to um, have 20 women impregnated at the same time because he was trying to cleanse the race or something, girl. He was trying to spread his DNA so that he could purify the the, the white race. Um, I can't. I can't. Good riddance. Like I said, I just want justice for the, the women that uh, he harmed. And the young girls that you want. Yeah. Well, we will be having a, an expert on human trafficking in the coming weeks. So you guys stay tuned to that because it's a real issue that has been going on. And that's also tied to this immigration thing. That's a question that we have to ask and wonder about some of these children who have been separated from their families and they're still in U.S. custody and they have been doled out through adoption agencies that's owned by Bessie DeVos's brother and um, doled out to... Um, you know, the foster care system while their parents have been sent back to a whole nother country. What's going to happen to those children? Exactly. 
Mm, you speak on. Well, we got a comment over here. Um, someone told me to be quiet. Uh, this is Lakeisha. She said she just bought some water shoes from Ross. I have to catch up, apparently. Girl, you have to catch up about... I didn't say Ross. I said Rouse's. So it's a different <laughs> store. But well, you need to catch up because Ross might be on there because we know how the lobby is. Okay? Let's go on to the next comment. It said, heard the attorney this morning and she said they are still going after the money for these women. I hope that is the case. Um, and I really hope, you know, whatever modicum of justice can be served, because really there is no such thing as justice when your youth and innocence have been taken away from you and that you have been abused in this way. But they're, hopefully they can rebuild their lives in some in some form or fashion. But Ooh, it, I still don't know how he was under so much protective watch for somebody who had tried to commit suicide before. Um, clearly, clearly somebody went on their lunch break and it was like, he going to be all right. <laughs> like I've heard people say, uh, yeah. Well, first, then they said, well, he was, he, he they took him off of uh, suicide watch. How that, hey, how sway? <laughs> he had just tried to kill himself. And he, he who, who did that? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, as the old folks say, something ain't right in the milk. Mm -mm, spirit. spirit <laughs> milk. Mm -mm, don't drink that. That's spirit milk. A comment here. Louisiana and Mississippi have had high cases of sex trafficking. And now we have these children whose parents work in a chicken plant now without them. Absolutely. What's going to happen to the children? And we live, I live here in Orlando, and it is also a hotbed for sex trafficking. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's really, really things that make you just scratch your head and your heart aches about what is really going on out here. What is really going on? I think it goes back for me. It goes back to what Star Jones was saying about the uh, the college scandal uh, a few months ago, which we've obviously forgotten about. That I guess they kids out of school, and I don't know what has happened with that. Um, with Felicity Huffman and uh, and Aunt Becky and all of the the the. the crew of individuals but like she said that there is a level of deception and corruption and scandal and all of these things that like we don't even like our minds don't even operate at that level of low downness <laughs> and, and that's why i'm like how, how do you how do you have a house that you wanted to have 20 women pregnant at the same time how does that i'm 20 underage and like how do your mind even get to that Anyway. Oh, like you said, the level of disgustedness <laughs> is, ugh, again, we've been swimming in unmitigated gall all night long, but he got away with this for so long, as so many do. Yeah. And it ties back to this theme of what we opened the show with. This is us. Because it's not new. I mean, the same thing happened with women who were enslaved who then were raped by their slave masters. Uh, people like to tell a nostalgic about Sally Hemings being the mistress, but when you have no agency over your life, how can you be somebody mistress? Cause you can't really give consent cause you don't have nothing to consent to. So when you're considered property, then I can do what I want to with what I own. Yeah. You can do what, yes, I, whatever you want. So, so with the myths and the lies and the stories that we tell ourselves, so that's been going on then, since then. So yes, indigenous children who were separated from their mothers. You know, the story of Pocahontas being in love with John. Pocahontas, John. Pocahontas ain't falling in love with John Smith. Y'all know that ain't true. But right. you know, The Colors of the Wind is a great song, Disney, but come on now. Come on now. So there's this mythology that, you know, this cloud that we, we live under, that we tell ourselves these lies and these myths about who we are. But this is us. This is who we've always been. It's just live and live in color. And then the question then end comes, as we've said all night long, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about the... Continue that there are more guns in this country than humans. 
Where they do that at? What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about the psychology of these uh, of people who feel like they're being oppressed just based because of someone else's ex mere existence? What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about an education system that is an indoctrination system? What are we going to do about that? What we're going to do about, you know, a, a, literally a man who lies so much that he can't even keep up with his own lies because he contradicts himself sentence after sentence. But he's elected to the presidency and people follow him. Yeah, what, what are we going to do about the fact that people are blindly following an R and a D? And at this point, there are too many circumstances where it all it all blends together. What I do know for sure is you to me, I, I liken it to a past in the church. If you if your level, if your relationship with God is the same as my relationship with God, I don't need to follow you. I don't need to, you can't teach me nothing. So, or you can't teach me anything, but so I don't understand how we electing people who have um, less intelligence than we do. We, we, we claim to be Christians and love truth and honesty and let somebody sit up there and lie to us every day. And we know he's lying. Like there's, there are literal counters now that have been created to count the lies. And what are we going to do about, letting just anybody into the White House. And I'm not talking about the people's house. I'm talking about letting anybody sit and make decisions for this entire nation is use their platform to spew hate and division and vitriol. What are we gonna do about that? And if we do nothing, then like uh, Professor Glaude said, this is us. Mm-hmm. Well, with that being said, I'm just going to ask you guys to like, to subscribe, to share. Hey, sister, so we can get in on these conversations. We didn't, we didn't even get into the fun conversations tonight because, like we said, we've been swimming in unmitigated gall all week long. We've been swimming in so much BS, and we just needed to talk about it. And, the um, you know, the politics the um and and as we started off with what what what, what do we start off with we start off with um with eddie gloss um uh, no politics it was oh, politics, politics people and and people pop who tried culture. it yes <laughs> to the pop culture because there's so many people who done tried it in the last couple weeks we right. couldn't even get to the fun stuff Cause I sure wanted to talk to y'all about my show Pose and The Handmaid's Tale. Cause they trying to make us go back. They trying to make us go there. Y'all better watch yourself. But we are gonna sign off tonight. We really appreciate y'all being so active in the comments. We got comments in the watch party. We got comments here in this feed. We really appreciate y'all for tuning in. Please like our page. We want to grow this viewership and we're going to be moving some of the, the existing videos onto our YouTube channel. So you can tell your friends that they've missed the old episode. They can go back and watch it on YouTube. They can find Hey Sister there. We're also working on being more active on our Instagram. So follow us, come along this journey, join in the conversation and have the conversation with us. And with that being said, we signing off tonight. Peace, everybody. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.